that was sick. That was, that was cool. If you race bicycles for a living, you can rest assured that somewhere, somebody is doing more than you right now. I've always been a driven person since a young age. Trust me, there's, I'm very competitive deep down inside and I'm gonna give it my all. It just hasn't worked out. but it's something that can be built on. Go on, naughty boy. Go on, naughty boy. Go on, naughty boy. I think motivation comes from within. Just always wanting to do better whether that's in life or racing or whatever. We do love the sport that we're doing and uh, clearly riding our bikes is our passion, but we are also passionate by racing and just the dedication of giving the best of yourself is something that we love and that we, we commit every weekend to do, yeah? Yeah! How was that? It's pretty fun. No race in Scotland would be complete without talk of rain and wind. While ill weather may be beyond our control, one thing we do know with a reasonable degree of certainty is if you put racers on a track, wet or dry, they'll ride to win. If you send me on a track, I will try to find the limit. I like to feel when something starts drifting or being on the edge. It's like a new challenge for me to adapt to the shorter stages and just see some new spots and that's what keeps me a lot motivated. This is all stuff to give uh, to the kids club here. Probably one of the biggest kids clubs we've ever come across. So we said we must give them something. And the Canyon Boys want to give stickers. Yes, stickers! <laughs> it's cool to see I like kids, man. They keep it simple. It's very uh, genuine, so it kind of grounds me. I like it. it. Reminds me I'm very lucky. <laughs> Inspiring others to ride their bike and chase after their dreams. I call that success, man. The future looks bright for, for Scotland, that's for sure. A bunch of rippers coming up. For us, like suspension-wise or bike setup, you have a solid base setting for the year. And it's just minor adjustments from there. Five PSI or something, it's very minimal. If you don't set up your suspension right, you're getting no benefit out of the bike. And that's a difficult thing for the public to get right because a lot of it's due to experience. People like Curtis run three tokens in their fork, which is not reasonable for the average consumer. Someone asked me when I'm running in my fork, I'd tell them, you know, I run 80 to 85 PSI from all the way out, you know, seven, eight clickers in. The wet conditions, a few people have dropped the pressure in their fork and rear shock just a tad bit, as well as slowing the rebound down a little bit, one to two clicks, just to hold on, hold on over the roots. On a track, say, like stage five of Whistler, you'll actually set up your suspension, maybe a click slower because the shock heats up. And when you're probably like a few minutes into your run, it's actually working perfect because it heats up a little bit, so it speeds up. Appropriate setup really goes a long way in terms of people enjoying the way their bike rides. Different strokes, different folks, you know, everyone's got to have a setup that works for them because they're riding the bike, not no one else. Enduro for me it's good because uh, it's different to downhill and cross country. We are together like all days. We, we talk uh, about uh, the last stage, how was it, and we climb together on the, on the leisure. And so it's good for us and for this part. Yo! This is a tour to Scotland. Yeah. We're driving to Annika. She's the fittest one. Yeah. 
He's the fattest as well. Then <laughs> <laughs> we got little Windrock. Yeah. And I got big old booty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> booty equals power. <laughs> power. Maximum muscular contraction in an explosive burst of movement. Add in speed and technical riding ability, and you've got the makings of the winning formula for enduro. Riding in Scotland is sick. It's so good. It definitely has more flow, but you just have the roots and the moisture, and it's two days to learn eight tracks. We have the choice now to do either one run for each stage, but you don't really know the trail, or you do two times every stage, but you consume a lot of energy and take the risk to be tired for the race. You can manage things only to a certain point. The more parameters you have, and more luck is actually being involved. First one was a hot one. There was a lot more pedaling to it than I thought. Completely different track. So many like greasy rocks everywhere. It was wild. For the Scottish weather, I think it's typical that it changes really quick and we got hail today and then sunshine and it's a part of the game out here in the nature. I just kept missing my lines and it's not quite had the same feel as last week but today's important just to make the minimal mistakes. I went over the bar, my bike was stuck in a stump with branches in the wheels and stuff. That's not the fastest way to be done, I think. Risk versus reward. Aggressively versus survivability. In Scotland, EWS contender Damien Oten wound up on the wrong side of the equation. His shot at the overall title would end here. Too much speed and a big jump. I lose some pressure on my front tire and yeah, it crashes. Now I think my ankle is maybe broken, I don't know, but I tried to ride the stage free, but it's impossible. The trails are probably similar to Rotorua, but different, different dirt for sure. It's been pretty wet here so far and uh, not enjoying the cold. It could come down to the technical rider really. Power, speed, technique, all are part of the race winning equation. But in order to win a race on the Enduro World Series level, the unspoken component of the formula is a talent. It's endurance. You're only good as your last race, and right now I suck, so that's cool, I know that. Or you win everything, and people hate you more. So like, can't win, man. Next on On Track. When I lived in Prescott, I heard about Flagstaff tons. Long story short, I never made it there. 